Okay, guys, I figured I'd do some uh, wet flow, air flow experiments with the same size clay fin. Of course, since it's an offset bowl, because it's a swirl port, notice how far away that is from the, uh, the valve guide. And I believe this is called the Glidden fin. This is, if you're looking at it from the spark plug side facing up, It'd be about the 8 o'clock position. And I always wondered what they were trying to do. And it looks like it's for fuel more than anything else. But I could be wrong. Okay. As far as the chamber, the chamber looks really good. As far as fuel. The bowl itself... Well, you can see what it's what it's designed to do. The fuel wax right into it, and then goes out. You can see we got a bunch of speckles there, right? It just hammers the fuel. And take a look at how much different our valve is. It's okay. Let's see if we can figure this out. So this is the valve is in this way. So, this part of the valve here is facing the chamber here. It's a completely, it's a completely different pattern than what we're used to looking at, which is, to me, really interesting. But, you know, like we say, I got issues. Okay. Well, that's completely different. Look at all those splatters going right down the bore. What is up top is nice and light and spread out. It even goes, it goes quite far this way. But I'm not, I'm not sure I'm thrilled with all that splattering action. I think I would much rather see powdering than splattering. Give me your input on that, guys. Okay, this is kind of this is kind of a mess, but and we filled we filled the bowl. The guys did the calculations of how much uh, that was actually we filled. My guess was we you know filled about 20, 20 cc's. I think I was pretty close. And uh, it, it's probably a two hundred forty cc port though. I mean it's huge. So. If we take a look at our flow numbers for a 220 port, we're not bad. We're not great either. We can see kind of what's going on with the fuel at this point. Really, that fin is right in the way. It's, uh, I don't know whether you would call it a fuel divider or a fuel shear fin. But uh, it really, I don't know. It's kind of weird looking the way it, the way it's it's hitting that back of that bowl. What would really be interesting is is to have like a one cylinder test engine like uh, MIT did, and you know you epoxy a fin in and you run it, and then you epoxy a fin in a different spot and run it and see what happens. I'm sure your fuel composition would make a huge difference too. Like this may work great for alcohol. I get the feeling that that fin would is really for alcohol. You guys fill me in. I'm sure you guys know more about uh, alcohol than I do. I don't know that much about alcohol. Except that there's a lot more fuel in the airstream and you need to really break that up in order to get your power out of it. Okay, we'll take a look this this way at it. Then I'll move the head. I was thinking of extending the fin to the valve guide, but that kind of would skew the results as well because it would be a bigger fin. And I didn't want to do that. So that's very close to the original shape of the other positions. Okay, we'll take a look at it from this angle. I still left little lumps and bumps on the clay. You can see where my 
My fingers and nails were all over that clay. A little lumps and bumps doesn't make that big a difference, though. Interesting about that liquid splatter right around the valve there. Valve seat. Okay, guys, we're going to take number 40, Clay Finn, 3 o'clock position, which was our last one we did. We're going to compare that one to, which this one is now, is the 8 o'clock position. I know you like those drawings. Why not? Let's compare two and see what we got. Uh, these pluses and minuses are in reference to these. So we got a minus, it equals a minus, plus, plus, plus in the mid-range, which is great. Then we get, like, you see that U? That's unstable. It was going from 268 to 277. All right, so can't really count 276 there. 280, that, it straightened up by that time, but it was it was a little wobbly still. That's why I have extra numbers written here, and then it finally settled. Now on a running engine, how is that going to work? Good question. I don't know. I'm going to willing to bet it doesn't have time to stable out. Minus, minus, minus. Doesn't quite top out as good. Does that mean it's a failure? No, not really. I don't know. It's it's close. It's close. I mean, I would prefer you know a thicker mid range, but I don't. This mess here, I don't like at all. Right where we're going to be running, that unstableness, not happening. Let's take a look at our, our squirrels. Okay, well, since that fin... Yeah, let's take a look at the pole. Okay, so the way this was originally designed is it's got more area here. So that's why that's wider. So the air will come around and swirl. Well, we put up. A huge divider right in the way so obviously it's going to seriously affect our swirl now high high rpm engines aren't going to require as much swirl okay so i can see where they were going with this let's take a look at the swirl numbers and and take a look Okay, these swirl numbers are reference to these swirl numbers. All minuses, okay? Decent minuses, too. Now, is it still enough to get going? Yeah, no problem. No problem. Except for this... That U there I'm not thrilled with. But we still have enough swirl to get it done. It's a much, it's a much milder curve. But remember, we're getting, we're getting less swirl but we're getting more air, okay? And a lot of guys swear by that. Less, remember, the swirl takes energy, so instead of filling the cylinder, you're spinning, you're spinning the air fuel. Now, I would think the types of fuel you're running and the types of racing you're running is going to dictate that. As far as like a street engine, I would much prefer the stronger swirl curve. Okay? Now, if something's constant high rpm drag this swirl doesn't matter only the swirl up here matters that's just my opinion it doesn't mean anything okay guys okay guys last time we looked at it this time we looked at it what changed well we lost some speed at the top of our pinch tiny gain tiny gain all right center of the cylinder tiny gain decent size loss right there Okay, now you have to remember, I've got a fin in the way on the uh, cylinder wall. So you can only get the pitot back so far. As far as your short side, you would think it wouldn't change much, and it really didn't, right? Those are almost identical. These are almost identical. This side took a kick back because you're changing the dynamics of the entire port. All right. So what can we say about this? It was a pretty cool experiment. I think I'm going to do one more with this swirl fin. I am going to do it at the 9 o'clock position. And we're going to be done with this. Uh, maybe I'll CC these. Ugh. You know how it is. It makes a mess CC and stuff. 
All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Interesting uh, comparisons with that with that swirl fin. It makes me. Uh, if you take a look at a lot of new modern designs, all right, I think the AFR has got a fin going this way for one application, and it's got a fin going this way for another application. I can't remember what they are off the top of my head, but that does kind of make some sense. If one's more of a street application and one's more of a race application, it does make some sense. I'm sure you could uh, jiggle them around and get get done what you want to get done. I'm going to guess right now this this is a, about a 220 cc port. I think I said that already. In any case, thanks for hanging out, guys. Have a good night.